Hey, this is Mr. Adler, and this lesson is on motion. You know, when we begin doing any kind of science, you start by making observations. In the beginning of physics, physics class, almost any first year physics class, you discuss kinematics, the motion of objects. And yes, that might sound like we start by talking about Newton's laws of motions. But before we get there, we, we have to truly begin by observing motion. When you make these observations, you are then able to describe an object's motion. These are not the same types of descriptions you might make about everyday things like, that's big, or he's nice. The descriptions in physics might be things like, the object has a mass of 5 kilograms, or is 3 centimeters long. When observing an object's motion, two very important observations to make are how far the object travels and how much time goes by during that travel. It can be difficult to observe these parts of motion and I'm going to try to make it a little bit easier for you so that you can understand the two types of motion more clearly. These two types of motions are motion at a constant velocity and motion that is accelerated. In order to see these motions more clearly, I've set up a couple of demonstrations. They use the same equipment, but are slightly different each time. Here's a quick video showing you the first setup. You can see an air track. This is very much like an air hockey table, except the track only allows the glider that sits on top of the track to move back and forth. The air from underneath reduces the friction, so you can see that after accelerating from the force of my push, which we'll talk about later in the year, the glider has no unbalanced forces acting on it. So, just like Newton's first law states, an object in motion will stay in motion at a constant speed unless acted on by an unbalanced force. There's an unbalanced force in the beginning to get the glider moving, but then there are no other forces acting alone on the glider, so it moves with a constant speed. Velocity, really, because it does have a specific direction. I also have a camera and a strobe light. I can open the shutter on the camera and leave it open. If I do this in a darkened room with the strobe light flashing, the camera will record several images in one picture. One image every time the strobe lights up, in this case the glider, with a nice bright strip of paper attached to it. Look at the result. You are looking at the definition of constant velocity. What do you notice? Take a moment, think about it. Maybe hit pause to collect your thoughts. Do you see that the distance between the strips of paper are equal? That means the glider covered the same distance for each unit of time between strobe flashes. That's what constant velocity means, covering the same distance for each unit of time. That's me using the formula for velocity. Velocity equals distance over time. If an object's velocity were one meter per second, it would cover one meter every second of time that went by or 2 meters every 2 seconds, or 17 meters every 17 seconds. I think it will help you if you can remember both the definition and the picture in your head. Another way of describing motion can be done on a graph. We can graph motion several different ways. I want to show you two of the most common because the same description looks differently depending on the graph you make. Since velocity is time divided by distance, making a graph of distance compared to time is very common. What would a graph of common velocity look like in this case? If we use our example that velocity was one meter per second, I hope you can see that every second, that's a unit of time that goes by, the object would cover one meter of distance. Each second, the object covers the same amount of distance more, and the graph looks like this. Let's say this is one second, you cover one meter. Another second goes by, you cover another meter. 
and so on. Every second you cover the same amount of distance as you covered in the amount of time previous. If you calculated the slope of your line, you calculate the speed of the object. That's the magnitude of the velocity, just not the direction. Objects traveling faster would have steeper slopes than objects traveling slower. Another common type of graph is a graph of velocity versus time. From what we've been talking about, you know that the velocity is constant. So what should the graph look like? Our example was the velocity was 1 meter per second. As long as time kept going by, it was still 1 meter per second. 1 meter per second. Still 1 meter per second. Still 1 meter per second. Still 1 meter per second. It's going to be a flat line at whatever y value represents the speed. Objects moving faster still have a graph that is flat. It would just be a higher y value. Those are supposed to be flat lines. There's another type of motion we want to observe. If you look at the setup for my next demonstration, you can see I've made a little change. I've raised up one end of the air track. If you watch the glider, you should see that it gets faster as it slides down the track. By tilting the track, I'm letting gravity, the force of gravity, affect the motion of the glider. This is an unbalanced force, which I keep saying we're not going to talk about, but it's tough to ignore. The unbalanced force of gravity accelerates the glider. Again, I did this demonstration in the dark. This time I'll prove it by showing you the funky light show that happens when I take my pictures. There's the strobe. There's my strip of paper on the glider. You see it every instant or two, and the camera picks up all of those instants and puts them on one picture. Here's the result. The picture doesn't look the same as when the motion was constant. How is it different? I'm going to give you a dramatic pause so you can think about it. You can see that the distance between the strips of paper is getting larger, can't you? Here's the definition of accelerated motion. An object covers a changing amount of distance per unit of time. Here's a few more pictures where I've tilted the track more and more. You can see the distance between the strips grows faster. We got one more. Now, there are changing types of acceleration that you will get into more depth in class, but this is the type of acceleration where an object is moving forward and getting faster. What would a distance versus time graph of that motion look like? Not a straight line this time. The slope isn't constant because the speed isn't constant. You're covering more and more distance as time goes by. Maybe you cover this much distance in the first second, but in the next second, you're going to cover more. In the next second, you're going to cover even more, and so on. You see a curving graph with an increasing slope. But be careful. Here comes the tricky part. If you make a graph of velocity versus time, it might look something like 
what you've seen already. It's a sloped line. That's because the velocity is increasing. And we'll always make it increasing at a constant rate. It looks like a distance versus time graph. The velocity is getting faster and faster and faster as time goes by. It looks like the distance versus time graph for constant velocity. So it's very important to look at what the y-axis represents. They are not the same motion, and they are not the same graph. This might not be the most favorite thing you want to do here, but you might want to watch this video over again to make sure you understand that there are two different types of motion that can be described with four different graphs. Always make sure to know what type of motion you are describing and what type of graph you are looking at or making. I hope this helps.